Hey everybody, what is up? It is your boy Dixie Outlaw back again for another video. Now, originally I did do this video, never released it because I don't like doing videos in the house for multiple reasons. But today's video is going to be a little bit of a longer one and it's going to involve a lot of talking. But hopefully, I can kind of help y'all find some tools that you might never knew you wanted, needed, or so on and so forth, whatever the case may be. Uh, and what I'm going to actually talk about first in today's video is my impulse buys. Because uh, I don't get that many of them because I'm not an impulse buy type person. Now, more specifically, what we're going to be talking about in today's video is strictly power tools. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about some of the tools that kind of got me started down the road I am on now when it comes to power tools because... In my town, it was all old school. A lot of jobs I did was done the old school method ways, and people still don't believe me on that, but we would drive nails about this long in by hand on the farm. Uh, and on top of that, too, I would take and drive giant freaking bolts by hand into boards and stuff and hold beams in place and everything with that by hand. I did not grab a drill or an impact or anything of the such because none, a lot of the crews I worked for didn't have that and also a lot of the jobs I did mostly by myself, I didn't have those tools because believe it or not, I didn't really know how those tools existed until way, way after the fact. Like, I think I was pretty much almost an adult by the time I found out about some of these tools and some of these tools I actually only found out about like in the last, I don't even know how many years. Uh, but that's kind of what today's video is going to be about. Hold on a second, y'all. Let me think try to y'all in a little bit closer. I apologize. Okay, I can't turn to grab this. Okay. Hopefully. Y'all can take and see a little bit better. Oh yeah, that definitely looks a little bit better. This way y'all can actually see what I'm talking about. Uh, now I don't have every single tool that I owned back then. I don't have any tools I used to own. And I definitely don't have every tool that's kind of helped me along the way, but I can't take and show you the main majority ones. All right. start with the cheapest stuff here on my impulse buys, especially because a lot of these things I was an impulse buy, believe it or not, I actually do use. Sorry, I'll have to get my drink. Uh, on top of, the, of them being things I actually use, they're actually things I quite like. Uh, there is a couple of exceptions in here, but we'll talk about that. First thing is this. Uh, very nice light. But I ended up painting over the one uh, flashlight part of it, but I don't care about that. This thing, believe it or not, when I first bought it, first time I ever bought one of these, I thought it was more of a gimmick than anything. And now I use this thing for a lot of things, even just hooking on my belt loop and using it to walk outside and be able to see what I'm doing. and using it in under cars and stuff like that. Definitely one of the impulse buys that was under five bucks. But I definitely am so happy that first time I ever bought one of these I did buy it because now I use it for a lot of things. Second thing we're gonna talk about is this little guy, which this little guy is a little finicky sometimes. 
this is, is this is an engraver tool. For those of you who don't know what this is, you can take and build a mark, wood, uh, glass, ceramic, metal, stuff like that with this. This guy cost me under 10 bucks. It's actually battery operated. It's by Performance Tools. It acts a little hickety, but the thing cost me like 10 bucks. So, it acts a little bit hickety. I don't care. Uh, it cost me enough money that this thing just literally stopped working tomorrow. I could literally just afford to go buy a new one and not even care in the slightest. Now, the thing is not the best tool in the world. By any means, of course, I think you kind of figure that by it being the price it is and everything else. But, it does make marks. And you can definitely end up seeing them, especially on plastic and stuff. I don't even know if y'all can see that. Might be able to catch a slight glare of that. And it definitely works way good on glass. But if you notice, there's my initials. And then I even wrote beater on this one because this is my beater impact. Even though it's my only impact, it's a cheap enough impact that I don't care about beating on it. And if I destroy it, oh well. It literally cost me like 30 bucks. I can buy new one of those two times over and just one work day normally if it's a good work day. So definitely if you want to be able to mark some tools and a little odd in dobs and dibbers like that, or if you're just interested in marking on glass, this thing definitely will take and do what you need to do. Go slow with it though, don't put too much pressure on it, especially doing metal. It likes to bog out. Uh, and I definitely want to do it on wood because it doesn't work on wood at all. I don't even think another tip in here would make any difference because it does got a ball tip and a pointed tip. Pointed tip is the only one I use in it. But now we got the ball one in there. Yeah, no real difference. Still sucks at marking on wood. So, my suggestion would be if you get this, just know what you're getting for one and for two. I would suggest just keeping the pointed one in there at all times because that's one of your main used ones. Now, this was about 20 bucks. For those of you who do not know what this is, this is one of my favorite purchases in some ways. Well, for the price especially. This is a soldering iron. Literally, very easy to use tool. All you do is push the button forward, press the button, and then it will heat up. Uh, one of the reasons why this is my favorite tool for the price is it's battery operated. It, it takes like four double A's, I think it is. But... For especially doing stuff in a car and everything, it does do the job and it does the job pretty dang well. And it feels comfortable in the hand in multiple different ways that you could hold it. Uh, and it's got the nice little cover on here to kind of protect your tip a little bit. As you can see though, I don't clean my tip like I'm supposed to. And this thing still does the job. Now, you are going to need a corded one for if you plan on doing any heavy duty stuff. Like especially if you ever plan on putting different cores on tools and stuff, this is not going to cut it. it. I don't know why, it just does not work that well. Because normally what you can do is you can set this up, you put some solder on it, touch it to the bottom of your wire, and then you can feed your wire, uh, your solder from the top and it will actually melt and be able to go all the way along and across and make a nice good connection. It doesn't got enough heat for thicker wire to do that. Now, on to my last impulse buy, and this was 20 bucks. and more or less the reason why this was an impulse buy is because I've had them before, and I actually needed to clean out this very drill, and I saw this finally through a 
company I trust, Hypercuff, instead of the one that they had before, which was only by the Hurt brand. And this is a rotary tool. Very nice. Comes with all sorts of different bobs and bibbers and stuff, which I'll probably show in a video when I'm actually using this and showing kind of how to use this. Very nice tool. It actually comes with replacement brushes. Uh, I cut the box in half to be able to get it to fit in my draw though, but... Oh shit, broke the thing, but oh well. This is kind of just some of the kit. It actually comes with a nice little wrench here to be able to take and change out the bits. And the flathead on the end just for taking out the brushes to be able to change them with brand new ones that they included. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different bits in here and stuff. Instructions are phenomenal. Because the instructions actually give you a rundown of different things you can do with it, different speeds to use, so on and so forth. Uh, and honestly, I love this tool with a passion. The cutoff wheel even works phenomenal. Uh, because I did kind of test out the cutoff, the cutoff tool just because I was like, I want to know how good this cutoff tool is. So if I ever need to cut something quickly, I know what I'm getting myself into. And honestly, it's not no high tier like what you'll get with a grinder. These fiberglass, I think that's what these are made out of. Cutoff wheels definitely are not made to do large, large jobs. But if you're an idiot and you're taking time to do large jobs with them, what, all I gotta say is what's wrong with you to begin with. Uh, and it comes with plenty of cutoff wheels, sanding disc, and all sorts of ceramic doodackers in there for sharpening up blades and everything else. Uh, it comes with a couple drill bits, so on and so forth. But, honestly, you are going to have to buy you another set of tips for this because... Especially the sanding belts, they suck. I completely shredded the wire wheel that came with this. And so on and so forth. Just you just know you are gonna to have to go and buy more tips for this. I found a set of tips. I don't know anything about them yet. I ain't even seen them. At O'Reilly's for like 18 bucks. That would definitely be a package that I'm going to suggest even without seeing it because the guys that can say it comes with a good bit of stuff in it and this thing came with a 105 piece set and honestly like I said this thing is a lifesaver in so many different meanings especially when it comes to cleaning and just simple stuff like that and even if you have to cut off a bolt yes you will wear through a lot of discs to cut off bolts with this but if you got a stubborn bolt and nut that won't come loose it's in a tight area that your grinder just won't fit in. Definitely, definitely would suggest a rotary tool. And this even comes with a couple of diamond tip, uh, diamond tip tools or whatever you want to call them. Pretty much what those are for is you can use them for a graven. I know that for a fact. I don't remember what else. The instructions said, I don't know what the instructions said you can use them for, but I know you can use them for engraving. I know that for a fact. Uh, and I just have this sitting in its own little drawer with the engraver because they kind of go hand in hand. Now, I don't think I need to talk much about this. I think this is a half chuck. Old school metal rigid supreme corded drill. I had to change out the cord on it because the cord that came with it was not in the greatest shape. I still have to change out the brushes on this because the brushes are shot. And eventually I am going to strip this, paint it, and make this thing look like new again. And 
and probably only use it every once in a blue moon because these are not as useful as they used to be. Uh, I don't even know if I have many drill bits that fit in this properly. I think a lot of my drill bits are more for a 3 8. But this is kind of the first type of drill. I don't remember if this is like brand, but first ever drill I ever owned to my name, I found in, I think it was old Barnard Garage or something I got permission to go into. And normally these always require fixing up, but when you fix them up, they definitely do take and run great and they are virtually impossible to destroy. The next drill I ended up getting after that, though, that was a quarter drill, was a plastic one like this one. This is a skill 3 8 chuck, and I believe it's an older skill. I'm not sure. I know it's not a brand new one by any means. Uh, the nice thing is about these, and I know you can do it because I've done it, is you can actually remove the chucks off these and put bigger ones on. I would never suggest doing it with one of these that come with 3 8 but like the half one. I've removed the chucks off those before and put like a 3 8 on them. It does just fine. I just again would not honestly suggest doing it. But in a pinch, and if you got the tools to do so, then go ahead and do so. Now both of these are reversible, which is a nice thing. Uh, they really honestly are lifesavers, especially when you get those really stubborn bolts that you just can't get with a battery operated tool. Now speaking of battery operated tools, first battery operated drill I ever got was I think a Black & Decker. It was a hunk of junk. But I still remember to this day that I can still be able to put screws in with a drill and be just fine and not overdo it like a lot of people do. That goes back to because this is what I first used to undo screws and so on and so forth. Uh, I can't remember the first time I got an impact, but I know it was way after the fact. And it's still surprising me everything an impact can do nowadays. Now, these hyper tough ones, I believe it was like, we'll say 80 bucks for the set, something like that. Uh, and it came with a battery and a charger. I think this is a 1.5 amp, 20 volt. I ran over this thing with a car and buried it into the dirt and it still works great. I even used it to take bolts off of motors and stuff like that. I actually got two motors back there that I still got a fickle fackle with. Uh, but honestly, kind of the staple of where I started was with just the drill. Uh, I still remember when I first found out about a drill, I was like, this is such a game changer, life changer, that I don't know how I did it without a drill. Uh, and still to this day, I find myself grabbing a drill a lot for a lot of things I need to take and do. Because you can even put a wire brush in this thing and be able to take and clean up stuff and everything else with them. They're just really nice tools to have. Now, the last tool on my agenda is a heat gun, paint stripper, whatever you want to call it. I remember when I first used these, this was back when I still was using butt connectors way more than what I do now. Because now that I actually have a uh, soldering gun, soldering wire and stuff, and heat shrink, <coughs> I use the heat gun way more than what I used to. <coughs> Again, back when I first found out about these, I used to only use them for peeling paint off of trailers. But now looking back on it and what I use it for now doing a lot of heat shrink, I could not see myself using anything else for taking connecting wires. It just is a really bomb thing. I need to replace the wire on this one. I might do that in a video just to kind of show you how easy it really is. Cause all you really got to do is just you cut off the wire right about here, right before this uh, little sleeve. You cut it off and then you just unscrew it and 
then you can connect the new one fairly easily. Uh, I gotta get a wire before I can do that. I probably got something around here in this garage I can steal wire off of. I can guarantee you on that. But I got so much stuff in this garage, it's not even fun. Uh, but I will also eventually do a video of all my toolboxes because as you see I got three right here. Got another stand up one right here and I got my other one right there. Uh, and I actually really do like this toolbox. And I'll take a into that in a video eventually. Uh, there's a couple of issues with it that I gotta fix but other than that it is pretty dang good and it does the job very well. So that kind of concludes this video. Hope y'all did enjoy. If you did, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you know about all my future uploads. And this is Dixie Outlaw, and I am signing off, y'all.